And on Cardi Divoy now, come reach here. Well, first of all, he the first boy. Of course, they are who can't keep this one, or can't keep the get the last. I feel like every Nigerian student should know about this story and how important it is to not mix with the wrong crowd. On the 7th of April 2020, three university students in Port Harcourt were reported missing. After their families were unable to reach them, soon the situation developed into a case of kidnapping because after a while, these three students were able to finally reach out to their families to let them know that they had been kidnapped and the kidnappers are demanding a ransom. It's not clear how much it was. Sources said 20 million, other sources said 10 million. Now, another thing that wasn't clear at the time was if the families eventually paid. Some sources said they did, other sources said they did not. However, regardless of whether or not they paid, the outcome was going to be the same. On the 1st of May, 2020, three weeks after they were reported missing, their decomposing bodies were found in the thick forest of Eteo in Eleme River State. They had been shot and killed, with the only female amongst them gang raped and hacked with a machete. And at the time their bodies were discovered three weeks after, it had gone to the advanced stage of decomposition, almost to the point that the only thing they could use to identify them were their clothes that were still attached to their bones. At first, when the story blew up, it looked like a case of kidnapping, as people thought, all right, okay, these kids were, these students were targeted for, by kidnappers, and the kidnappers were only looking for ransom. However, upon further investigation by the police or by the SARS operative or SARS Special Anti-Kidnapping Squad, it turned out that this was not a kidnapping case, and rather that this was a case of unresolved anger, vengeance, and greed that stems from a forex deal gone wrong. So who was revenging, and why were they revenging? For them, who let no enter, and for the where they can use machete, come machete, one of them head for the boy die. Sorry, who be the guy to to bribe, or who be the guy to mention? I uh, I don't know because of. If he had three enter motor come bright house. Okay, nice and carry the other two and the three follow come bright house. And yes. Okay. So so now for the web right now, come call us for phone. Say the boy he be tram. Say he get money where enter the boy account. Now for the you see, these three students lived off campus in their schools. It was said they lived in the Alakaya houses of Uniport around Choba area. And despite the fact that they all lived in the premises of the University of Port Harcourt, only one of them was a student of the University of Port Harcourt. The only female amongst them, Joy Adoki, who was in her final year, 400 level in management science. And she was 27 at the time. Fortune Obimba, one of the boys, was an 100 level student from the RSU University, that is the River State University of Technology. Not very far from Uniport, but not Uniport, at least. While Nelson Nwanfo was also a student of RSU. However, the only thing that brought these three people together was the fact that they were neighbors. They just lived in the same compound. We've established the fact that these three students, or the only thing that brings them together is the fact that they were neighbors. The possibility is that Fortune and Nelson were a lot closer to each other and they were friends and maybe shared a lodge. However, Joy was the only one who pretty much wasn't in their group. She was just a next door neighbor who lived in their compound. And how she got involved into this tragedy is something that a lot of people could maybe learn from, as unfortunate as it may seem. Now, this is where things start to develop. It turned out that Nelson was the big boy of the group. He seemed to be the one who had money. And according to what I remember at the time of the story, he had a car, which, well, interprets as the typical uniport or the typical student big boy. It's not clear what he did, but Clearly, according to this story, he got a lot of his money from Forex trading. Let's just say Forex trading, because, you know, even back then, when the story was still coming out, many people knew it wasn't Forex. But for the purpose of this story, and as it has been reported on the media, let's call it Forex. So, on the day that they were kidnapped, apparently, which was around the 6th or 7th of April 2020, Nelson got a phone call from a friend named Bright. Bright happens to be a fellow forex trader and when he was calling Nelson, he requested to meet with Nelson because they had an issue the year before in 2019. Now you also need to remember that this was a pandemic era. This was when the pandemic was hitting. So everywhere was scanty. Even at the time, the University of Port Harcourt was on lockdown and everyone has been asked to go home. So apparently Joy and the other students were not supposed to even be around school premises due to the severity of the COVID-19 virus. But they were, and I think this is probably 
what played a role in how they were able to be kidnapped quite easily because pretty much everyone was afraid of the virus and most people were indoors or avoiding contact. But moving on, Nelson got this call from Bright. It's not clear what they spoke about, but it was possible that Bright just wanted to meet with him to discuss future forex trade. It happened that there is a new business and Bright wanted to get Nelson involved because they worked in the past. And despite they've worked in the past, did not mean that they were in good terms because on the contrary, in fact, the deal that they had in the past was what led to this sour tragedy, which is tricky because according to Bright, the year before, he had a deal with Nelson over a forex trade. And in that trade, they got the sum of 4 million naira. And that money was paid into Nelson's account. And subsequently in 2019, according to Bright, he tried to reach Nelson for Nelson to give him his cut. But Nelson never paid him his share from the money. In fact, in a search, Nelson had run to Ghana and pretty much maybe squandered the money for the most part because come on, 4 million era, it will finish eventually. Maybe now that it has finished, that was why Nelson felt the need to rekindle his relationship or his friendship with Bright. And that was why when Bright called him over, he was happy to go and meet Bright to first of all, maybe apologize for screwing him over the year before, or maybe Nelson just did not think Bright deserved the cut or the part of the money he was demanding for. Because that is a common thing with people who do this kind of businesses. When there's a deal that the, somebody just participated a little bit and then when the money comes those people who just had a minimal participation start to demand half of it and back then like i said when this story happened i was still in Port so from what i remember what people were saying then was that there's a possibility that nelson did not even screw bright over that bright was just entitled and demanded more money than he actually contributed in the supposed deal but bright had other um, grievances bright's argument was that he deserved half of the money or a percentage of it and Nelson never gave him, which meant that to him, he had a bad taste in his mouth for Nelson. And Nelson was aware of it, or maybe not, but I had a feeling Nelson knew what was happening. I had a feeling Nelson was aware that Bright is still upset with him, regardless of how long ago the deal must have been. So when Bright requested to see Nelson, Nelson knew something was up, but Nelson was willing to see Bright because Clearly, this might be another deal that would favor them both. And hopefully, you know, he will split it equally. But Nelson knew that Bright had some grievances. Nelson knew that Bright was still angry about what had happened in the past. It is possible that they had settled over the phone, but Nelson wasn't sure about Bright. But he needed to visit Bright. He needed to see Bright because this is money here. This is business. Again, as though it's what it seemed. I mean, that was what bright was luring him in with so rather than nelson to go by himself to meet bright nelson decided or thought that it was best to go with his friend fortune and obviously fortune a hundred level student happy to be around this big boy and their friends apparently from what it seemed seemed like they know each other they have a pic pictures together fortune accompanied his friend nelson and now on that day it happened that joy adoki was also said to be getting ready to go home to see her sisters she dealt with wigs she sold shoes and pants she was a business girl she was an entrepreneur so it's she wasn't exactly directly involved with these boys according to her sister she was already on the phone with joy that day that they were kidnapped and joy told her that okay i'm coming home today i'll fix the wig that you had done with your friend i'll do something no, because that was what she was into so she was going home to help her sister out with her business because we're supposedly business partners and it is also possible that on her way trying to go home that was the same time that nelson and fortune were going to see bright and again it was believed that nelson had a vehicle he had a car and that was probably when they offered to give her a ride or that was when she probably asked for a ride citing the direction that they were going to was probably in her favor and that is possibly why or how joy may have joined them because other than that, she wasn't exactly best of friends with them. There was no picture of her with these boys. One of them was in 100 level. She's a 400 level Uniport student. They don't even go to her school. So the only relationship she may have with them is that they were neighbors, which made sense. And it's a good thing that we now know that she was also on her way going home to meet her family when this horrible thing happened. So when Nelson, Fortune and Joy were on their way to 
drop Joy somewhere that would take her to her home, Nelson most likely thought that going with his friends would maybe limit whatever Bright was going to do to him. It is possible that Nelson was aware that Bright would maybe want to fight him, maybe want to hit him, maybe want to attack him, or maybe want to hook him or hold him a little bit till he provide the money that you know he claimed they were owing. Because rather than drop Joy on her way to go to where she was going to, Nelson thought that all three of them together could go and see Bright briefly. Nelson was able to convince her that, okay, let's just stop by at one of my friend's place. We just want to see briefly. Then maybe I'll drop you afterwards. It happens that maybe Bright lives around that same Choba area, even though it was said that Bright lives in LMA, which was an hour away from the school. It's not clear where Bright lived, but it, it turned out that Nelson was able to convince Joy that after he had finished seeing his friends, he would probably take her directly to a house so she doesn't have to spend money on transport. Given the COVID-19 situation at the time and the transport situation at the time, it was most likely a favorable deal for Joy to be taken home directly by the, the friend who had the car. And that was when things just got sour because when they got to Bright's house, according to Bright, he was surprised that Nelson came with two other people because he had plans for Nelson. He wanted to deal with Nelson. Nelson was the target, according to Bright. So when Nelson came in with joy and fortune, this caught Bright off guard. And this is why I feel like Nelson must have known what Bright was up to. That was why he came with his friends, to maybe de-escalate the situation in case he got into trouble. You know one of those things where you offend somebody and you want to go and apologize, but you don't know how the person would react, so you go with a few friends just in case. That was what this seemed like. It's also possible that Joy did not know what she was getting into because she most likely thought they were going to just see a friend. And she really just wanted a ride home. And even though maybe for some reason Bright decides to escalate and fight and attack Nelson, nothing would stop Joy or Fortune to just beg him and apologize on his behalf and, you know, de-escalate the situation. But the problem was Bright had a very demonic plan for Nelson. It was not to beat him. It was not to rough handle him. It was not to hook him and demand his money. It was to kill him. And that was when it was believed that Bright needed to change his tactic. Seeing that there were now three people here, him taking just Nelson would raise alarm, would reveal his identity because now these other two people have seen him and they now know him and they know his name. That was when Bright realized that he had to change his plan. Instead of killing only Nelson now, he would have to kill all three of them. And that was what happened. Bright reached out to a group of cultists and this group of people he had planned with were supposed to come into the house and take all three of them into the vehicle and drive them to the forest. It is believed that that was what happened. All three of them were held all stage, tied. It is possible that they had done it from Bright's house, but it's also possible that they were eventually taken in the vehicle to the area where they were killed. Nelson, Fortune, and Joy were, in that moment, abducted and they were taken into the thick forest in somewhere in LMA, a forest that was so secluded. It was in that forest that this group of boys, all five gang members in the court group, requested that before they do anything to them, they should call their parents for ransom. Because hopefully this was where Bright was hoping to get his money back. And like I said in the beginning, it was possible that the family paid the ransom. Some sources claim that they did. Some sources say they did not. However, though, like I also said, whether or not they did, was not going to change the outcome because they were all going to die because they now knew who Bright was. So if only Nelson was killed, these other two were going to be the mouthpiece that would rout them out. And so that was when Nelson and Fortune were believed to have been shot dead in the forest. And then Joy Adoki was assaulted and eventually killed. When the police did their investigation, they were able to trace one of the court members by the name of Frank Akpan, who did not waste time to make his confession and also leading the police to the site where they had left the bodies of these three students. Eventually, through due diligence by the police too, Frank was able to take them and uncover other members who were involved in the killing of these three students. And that was it. That is how these three young students lost their lives due to a forex deal gone wrong. Personally, I know that if Joy knew the situation, she most likely would not have inserted herself. It's just an unfortunate story. And as sad as the outcome was already, I feel like this is something that a lot of people can be aware of and be more careful 
especially in school campuses where basically nobody knows anyone from anywhere so guys thank you for watching don't forget to let me know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to like and share and subscribe if you haven't subscribed you could also turn on notification button so should there be any future updates you'll be the first to get notified thank you